So paper one in the Lancet series on midwifery is on midwifery and quality care. And the job of this first paper was to, if you like, lay the foundations to assess the existing evidence for the impact and contribution of midwifery to the health and survival of mothers and babies. And we had the challenge really of addressing some of the problems and really looking for all the evidence and analysing all the evidence that currently existed. The problems that we had to address included the fact that you know, a lot of people across the world already had a bit of a consensus that midwifery was really very important, but it was very varied from country to country. So in some countries there were midwives practising to international standards, even though not always able to practise to their full potential because the system didn't necessarily allow them to do that, but there were midwives practising. In other countries there were no midwives, there was a mix of community health workers or traditional birth attendants or working with doctors, working with nurses. And so it was quite hard to, if you like, assess what women and babies needed in any country uh, for all women and all babies by looking at what the care providers were doing. We just couldn't do that. So we decided to take a view and start with the needs of women and babies first and foremost, not the needs of the health system, not the needs of the care provider, but actually take it right back to basics and say what do women need, what do babies need, what do families need through this continuum of care from pregnancy through to the early days and weeks of life. So we had to start by defining midwifery now, the International Confederation of Midwives has defined the midwife and what the midwife does and the standards of competencies for the midwife. But we were saying, what about midwifery as the care that women and babies need, even if they don't have a midwife? How do you describe that care? So we set out to look at the existing evidence, the existing writings of people in the field, and tremendously what we looked at was the views of women themselves about what they needed. And we ended up by identifying a definition in which every phrase really matters and every part of it, if you like, together is what we describe as midwifery. And that was really the first core step in this paper. And if I can read that to you, midwifery is defined in this series as skilled, knowledgeable and compassionate care for childbearing women, newborn infants and families across the continuum throughout pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, birth, postpartum and the early weeks of life. Core characteristics include optimising normal biological, psychological, social and cultural processes of reproduction and early life, timely prevention and management of complications, consultation with and referral to other services, respecting women's individual circumstances and views, and working in partnership with women to strengthen women's own capabilities to care for themselves and their families. Now that definition we could spend hours talking about and how we got there, but basically it derived uh, from all those various sources of evidence and has now been agreed across the whole series and indeed with a number of partners and uh, peer reviewers and others with whom we consulted uh, en route. Having that foundation of what midwifery is allowed us then to go on and look at the formal literature and we started first with qualitative studies of the views of women themselves about what they needed and we conducted what's called a metasynthesis of those studies and that's just a a word to explain that we took the findings of those studies and combined them and uh, into a description of what it is that women and babies need. And it was surprisingly consistent across countries, across cultures. Um, and so that really was our starting point for forming our new framework of quality maternal and newborn care. Some people refer to it as the QMNC framework, but it's the quality maternal a newborn care framework. And we've used the evidence starting with those views of women and then moving to another review in which we included over 460 
systematic reviews of uh, the care that women need to really analyse and unpick the characteristics of that care. And we've differentiated between what women need, how that care should be delivered and who should be delivering it. And it's been really important to unpick those elements clearly because we can now relate very specifically uh, the kind of care that's being given and who should be uh, delivering it, as well as what people have focused on in the past, which has almost always been on what is being done uh, to women and to babies, if you like. And actually one of the really interesting things we found in that process was the core contribution of preventive and supportive care. The care that prevents women from developing problems, the care that prevents babies uh, from running into problems, the care that prevents mortality, that prevents morbidity. So absolutely important as those essential interventions and life-saving interventions are, that people have focused on for years, what we were finding was the real importance of preventive and supportive care to minimise the numbers of women and babies who need that. So we evolved the framework, we looked at what they needed, we looked at how it should be given with continuity, with respect, uh, for example, with strengthening women's own capabilities. And then we came to the question of who should best be providing midwifery. And so we looked at the systematic reviews that have looked at midwives, at nurses, at uh, family physicians, at obstetricians, and at community health workers and traditional birth attendants and others. There's a whole wide spectrum of practitioners working in this field in different countries and in different skill mixes. So we looked at all the trials that existed in the field and what we found was that midwives are really making the most consistent contribution across the whole of that framework that we had outlined and they're likely to be delivering care in the least fragmented way and in the most cost effective way as well. So that was a really important conclusion to come to. So in a sense the framework is allowing us to say whoever is delivering the care it should be delivered like this but it's also allowing us to say our, our further analysis of the workforce reviews that actually the evidence is that midwives educated to international standards are probably best placed to be the people delivering midwifery which shouldn't be surprising to anyone but actually was very nice after a very careful and systematic set of steps really being guided by what the evidence was telling us to come out with that very very clear conclusion so that was what paper one has done and it offered us a foundation then for the other papers to take that information to take that framework and go on and using different methods to further examine the impact of midwifery and how it fits within the health system and really how then to take our findings and build them into uh, health system planning in the future.